I'm David Cross, I'm an architect, and what better way to demonstrate what I do for a job than describe the journey through my self-build uh, project in 2008, which was a fairly foolish time to build a house when no banks were lending, but hopefully this will illustrate what we do as architects. This is the site that we bought, which was two garages. It was back gardens of two houses on the road at the top, and the two people who were selling the houses had fallen out with everybody in the area, and they decided they were going to impose lots of different rules on us, what we could do, what we couldn't do, and so on, height restrictions and whatever. We said, no, if we're going to build a house, we want to build what we want to build. So there's the site. Where do we start? What do we do when we're faced with a project, whether it's your own house, somebody else's house? This is a CAD drawing. This is something we download off of the internet. It's an OS map. It shows the neighboring properties. It shows the road. Um, and then what we have to do is get the pens out and start sketching. This was going to be a live sketch, but I realized that 20 seconds was nowhere near enough time to do a site analysis map. So what you can see here is we're looking at things like building lines, views, um, so you can see the wood to the top right. We've got the solar diagram described very plainly there, the east, south, west. It's obviously more complex than that. So where does the sun go? And then from that, we can generate a floor plan. So this is the first floor, the site sloping. We generate this floor plan using felt pens, piece of paper, scale rule, and we sketch, and we doodle, and we see what we can do. So we try and make sure the windows face where the views are, that they catch the sun, that the heat loss is on the north, uh, prevent heat loss on the north side, and make sure that everything we do is considered according to the site plan. So we don't just plonk a house on a site, we think about where everything goes. This is the view that we quite rightly were very precious about, so to the left is the little wood, and to the right are the views over Norton, and then further to the right there are views over the Peak District. Then we take the drawings into CAD. So this is a CAD drawing, and ironically, we work in pen styles. So each thick line is a different pen on the printer, and it's not really like that anymore, but we still call them pen styles. And from that, we generate these two-dimensional floor plans that we can show to clients, to the planners, and we work the project up, we work to the next floor. So this is, so this is the first floor again. Um, working through the zones where we want staircases, where we want windows, where we want different rooms and relationships. These are often just sketched out as little squares that link to each other. And we work on the topography. So this, in this instance, my house, the garden goes over the roof garden. We work on the structural lines. So at this point, we'll be working with engineers. We're working with m and &E engineers. We're making sure that everything works, that everything stitches together. There are sketches, there are doodles, over and over and over again. We cut out things. We scratch things out, we put tracing paper over the top, we talk to the client, the client doesn't like it, my wife didn't like it, we move the bath, we move chairs, I don't want the settee there, I don't want the TV there. And then we work it into the elevations, so these are what the elevations look like. And to lay people, it's quite difficult to read. What does it really mean? I can read that very clearly, but my wife couldn't. So how do we then take that to the next level? What, at what point can we start describing things better. So I sit at the kitchen table with my wife and drew what the lounge would look like from her scrapbook that she'd cut out. Where does she want the settee, the tel telly, where the windows will be, where the curved window would be, where everything goes in the relationship. That sketch would probably take a minute, two minutes. Very loose, very rough. We don't get too precious about it. And then we work through the kitchen. Every room in the house we can work into 3D. And there are very quick and easy ways that we do that and you master it over years working in isometric, working in perspective, single point, two point, and your arm eventually just works in certain angles naturally without even trying. Um, I've got a client that always says to me, get your pens out and do some sketching. He wants to see it happen. More, more recently, we've got new software. This is SketchUp. This is very quick and very easy. I can't use it. But this is a, a nice way to take a building into three dimensions. So you can start seeing if the proportions work. Do we like the way that the bay window comes out over? That bay window is to catch a view. We can then take it into a different software package, take a photograph, render the building, put real materials on. How does it sit in context? Does it work? Do we like what we see? And from that, we fine tune and fine tune and we overlay and we sketch. We'll sketch on top of this, we'll sketch on top of photographs and we keep working the d design through and then we end up on site. 
every little inch of that building has to be drawn. The junction between the window, the doors, where the oak panels go, where the steel frame is. This has got a steel frame, a concrete retaining wall. It's got industrial commercial floor planks. It's got commercial floor stairs. It's got wiring that needs to go through, services that need to run through. And all these are done with sketches. And the end product is this. This was um, Build It magazine that the house was featured in. It's not quite finished. That steel band is now painted. Um, and the oak's actually faded a little bit. But you can see that from the basic little sketch, the house becomes a house. And the materials come to life. And there's my wife and my little girl and my little boy in the kitchen that we sketched. And you'll see that it looks pretty much like we said it would. The, the corner window in the kitchen where I can cook and look at one part of the garden and look at the other part. And the lounge, how the lounge worked. We wanted to work with materials. We wanted it to feel like the moors with the pinks and the purples and the greens. We didn't want it to be minimal and cold. But then my wife did allow me a little bit of architectural freedom and get, let me make the staircase minimal and architectural. So I, get, I got the eye, which goes all the way through the house as a three-story feature. We got a local artist to make the light. And we did very minimal things, which is probably my favorite space with a four-meter roof light at the top. The light changes all the time with the way that the sun comes through different windows. All deliberately started with those first sketches. Nothing is by chance, everything is by a deliberate stroke of a felt pen, all the way through to technical drawings that create a building like this that you see before you. Now, we decided stupidly to see if the BBC wanted to follow us, so we started with To Build or Not To Build with a guy called Christian Digby, who you might remember died um, halfway through filming of an extreme strangle wanking accident. And he was a great guy, very talented presenter, so we had to reshoot all the, all the start of the build again. And this was his first sketch. 